Welcome to the group clearing. And our topic today is feeding the hungry ghost, the endless desire. What does that mean? Sounds pretty cool, huh? Sounds kind of mysterious. <laughs> when we think about the ghost, what we're really referring to is all the ghosts inside of you. But basically, it's really true. <laughs> all of your desires, whatever they are, some of your desires have to do with wanting to have love, wanting to, um, you know, have success, wanting to have money, and then all the different kinds of addictions, the addictions of cigarettes and, and um, uh, actual hardcore drugs and alcohol and sex and food and, you know, almost everything's an addiction if you obsess on it, I have to tell you, okay? So basically, if you're having an experience where you are thinking about something. Oh, here's a good one. Chocolate. Mm -hmm. People know chocolate. You got cho I have people that have, cho they have chocolate in the house. They cannot have chocolate in the house because if it's there, they'll eat it. All of it. <laughs> and not only that, it isn't just chocolate. It's anything. Whatever that is inside of you where you know, I know the feeling. It's like you know it's there. You're thinking about it and you could be doing other things, but it keeps calling to you. Okay. <laughs> keeps calling your name and pretty soon you find yourself going over and doing whatever that is, whether it's a cigarette or whether it's a pot or whether it's alcohol or whether it's chocolate or food or cheese or whatever that is. It's speaking to you. So first let me just share a little bit about if it's just you inside and no other interferences, it's going to be more manageable. You might know that it's there, you might have a desire, but you'll be able to be in life and do different things and come to it here and there, okay? Now, when your body has a lot of other beings inside of it, which I'm gonna tell you straight up, okay? There is nobody on this planet who doesn't have at least a hundred other entities inside of them. Most people have over a thousand. Some people have thousands of entities inside of them. You might be saying, how is that possible, okay? Well, if you realize that it's not like putting a body inside of you. It's the energy, it's the consciousness, it's the awareness of each individual. And when you look at awareness, can you grab hold of it? No. Can you see it? Not really. It's just, it's, an, it's consciousness is awareness. It doesn't have any form to it. It doesn't have texture and density. You could have a million thought forms and entities inside of you, and you're still not going to have bodies inside of you. So what does happen, though, when we start taking them out, you do feel lighter. Sometimes people feel like they've lost weight. And it's not because the body's actually lost weight, but when you have that many beings inside of you, it can feel dense and heavy, because all these thought forms, mm -hmm. all the awarenesses of different beings are inside the physical body. So here's what happens. Whatever you, uh, trauma you experience, whatever um, happens to you that causes any kind of shock or any kind of feeling like you're, you're unhappy, you're feeling sad, you feel, especially with little kids, they get upset about things and they feel like their parents don't love them. That happens so easy. It doesn't take anything for someone to feel like their mom or their dad doesn't love them or somebody, their friend doesn't love them. So the moment we start feeling that kind of feeling like they're not loving us, we start having this kind of like a sadness, okay? And that sadness creates also another feeling inside that becomes familiar, okay? And, and, then, and then that familiar feeling, which, which begins to anchor deep inside, creates an emotional disturbance in the body, and that energy becomes dark, and that's what we start attracting people to us with the same frequency. So other people that have lived their lives and in any way felt like they were unloved or unwanted, even as adults, even as children, they can literally enter into your physical body because you have that frequency. You're also continually sending out a frequency through the brain waves that you're not aware of. These frequencies that you're sending out are coming from the subconscious, they're not coming from your conscious mind. If you were creating from the conscious mind, the world would be different, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Completely different. Mm -hmm. So we know that's not happening. We know that we're creating from the subconscious. 
Now keep in mind, we're not just creating from this lifetime, we're also creating from all of our past incarnational experiences. So whatever we've experienced, we get imprinted in the soul imprint and that comes into the physicality. And then we have the same scenario, the same kinds of experiences repeatedly, we call it recycling. And so you've had, you've had thousands of recycling experiences and many, many lifetimes of doing the same thing, only different, recreating the same kinds of feelings. What also gets anchored in is that perverse pleasure in one's suffering. So even as a child, even little, little kids, the moment they start having that sadness or that feeling like the poor me, nobody loves me, oh, this is a good one too. The one that people feel like they were born into the wrong family or this isn't really their family, they must have been adopted. <laughs> I wonder if everybody has that thought at least once in their life. I know I did. Okay, so, um, <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's so typical. I mean, we're all so, we're all, you know, so, so different and yet we're all the same. It's kind of a trip. But basically, in that desire or in that feeling of getting pleasure in one's suffering because it becomes familiar. Once something becomes familiar and you begin to identify yourself as that, then you're going to create, recreate more and more of the same. So things like addictions or things like, um, you know, when we're obsessing on something or someone, those are all coming from that deep, deep, deep core feeling of not being enough, not being loved. So we're trying to fill the void. But also that, that feeling, the perverse pleasure in our suffering is something that people really need to wake up to. So the next time you're in a place of suffering, check this out. When you're feeling that sadness, if you can, while you're in that sad feeling or in that feeling of feeling like, oh, poor me, you know the feeling, uh, you know, nobody loves me, nobody wants me, life doesn't work the way I want, I don't get to have what I want, relationship isn't coming to me, I don't get to have love, I'm not with the right person, the job isn't right, all those thoughts create a feeling in that feeling, when you drop in and just let yourself be with that feeling, you're going to start to feel that there really, really is a slight pleasure in your own suffering. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to give it up? Because if you're not, we can clear all these energies out of you, you're just going to call more back in. Okay? So you have to want to not be in suffering. You have to say, I'm done with my own suffering. I get it. I've been calling it in, I've been welcoming it, I've been loving my own suffering, and now it's time for this to come to an end. Once you really want that, you'll wake up to that every time you do go into a feeling or a thought of, oh, I wish I wasn't here, I should just die, oh, nobody loves me, I feel so sad, I'm such a victim, poor me, go into that feeling, go, oh, there's that pleasure, mm-hmm-hmm, feel so good to feel so bad. <laughs> it does. And, and so, you know, why, why would somebody keep eating, 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 getting fatter, 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 feeling more and more alone and more and more lost because their perverse pleasure and their suffering is big? Okay? This is what I'm saying. You have to wake up to it. And waking up to it is, a, is awareness that it's actually true. So, you know, also when you have a reaction to say, oh, no, I don't have any pleasure in my suffering, if you're having that kind of reaction, I guarantee you, check it out because you are having great pleasure in your suffering. You just don't want to acknowledge it because you don't want to give it up. Okay? So if you, you, know, you want to give it up, if you really want your life to change, face yourself. Face what's happening. Look inside. I'm giving you some keys here. I'm giving you little pieces to the puzzle that's going to help liberate you. So now we have this perverse pleasure in our suffering. We know that's there. So the frequency that we're sending out, the doors that we open, especially when we say things like, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be in this body. Somebody help me. Somebody save me. It sucks being here. You know, the world is a terrible place. Blah, blah, blah. So that feeling also is going to attract the same, same, same kinds of energies, people that are feeling that same feeling, are going to come into your body. And these people are going to help you to continue to feel that poor me, that perverse pleasure and suffering, that feeling like nobody loves you. 
So when you start collecting all these beans inside of you, and it starts happening really, really early, sometimes it happens in the womb, sometimes it happens shortly after birth, and then for sure it's happening as toddlers and children and as you grow up, and especially teenagers and adults. So you're pulling in a lot. And then the more, especially like teenage years, that becomes very difficult, challenging, because they're, they're finding out who they are, they don't know who they are, and, it, and all the instabilities and insecurities and feelings of not being loved and not being wanted are very, very present. And so they pull in a lot more energies and a lot more people inside of them. And so now as an adult, you want to you get over your addictions. Well, if you just try to get over addictions, it doesn't just go away. You know what I mean? It's like the, the desire can still be there even if you stop smoking cigarettes or you stop doing drugs or, or uh, whatever the addiction is, desire will still be there and even if you find that the desire isn't there, it won't take much to trigger that desire again in times of really intense experiences, when things get overwhelming, when things get really, really intense through loss or divorce or act car accidents or any kind of you know physical things, injuries, all these different things throw you right back into this crisis and you're, you know, once again, you're looking at the desires. So um, by clearing out all these other beings that are also wanting that same feeling, and also the beings that have the same desire, like if you're an alcoholic, if you're a drinker, it doesn't matter what the addiction is. You can be a sexaholic, you can be a foodaholic, okay? you can be a chocolateaholic, you can be a smokeraholic, whatever. And <laughs> you know what I mean? And whatever that is, you're dealing with hundreds of other beings inside of you who want that same addiction, that want the same high or the same feeling. Here's, what, here's one of the problems. I don't think I've mentioned this before. The entities inside of you have the desire that you're feeling. So it's feeling like it's your desire, okay? Here's the thing. You might be able to have that cigarette and feel like, oh, the relief. They don't. Mm -hmm. You might take that drink and feel that relief. They don't. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You might shoot up that heroin and you might get it, but they don't. Mm -hmm. Okay? So they're in a constant state of wanting, seeking more, 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 because they're not getting the high they want. They're not getting the satisfaction, the fulfillment that they're after. It's not happening. So by clearing these beings out, it gives the person an opportunity, a greater opportunity, to truly be done with that, that whatever the issue is. Way back in the 80s, I worked with heroin addicts, okay? And I can tell you straight up, when I did a clearing, when I cleared out the entities that wanted the heroin, these people were able to get off and stay off. Okay? The ones that didn't get the clearings, they didn't get off, they didn't stay off. Or they got off, but got back on. So it's really vital to clear out what's inside. And it, it's tr it holds true for whatever that addiction is. You know, it can also be that feeling of always looking for the one. People, okay, hang on a second. Okay. So that's a good one. I like that one. See, looking for the one. So even when, when you're looking for the one, here's what happens. I'm going to ask you a couple questions. How many of you ever know or felt like you got into a relationship, but in the back of your mind you can feel this thought, is this really the right one? Is this the one? Is this going to work? Can I put both feet in and really jump into this with everything I've got, open my heart up? How many of you have always kind of kept a little bit of withholding or a little bit held back or even the thought that, well, maybe the real one will come someday. The chosen <laughs> one will come someday. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so there's always a little bit of a holding back. Okay, so we, we withhold our love. We don't jump in all the way. We don't open the heart all the way. We don't give her all 100%. So there's always a withhold. So. That too, you draw in and pull in other, other pe people that have died with the same kind of thoughts, same kind of feelings. And then there's the longing, okay? So there, the longing is that really deep, deep, deep core. So even if you are in a relationship and you can still be in love with your beloved to a certain degree, pretty much a lot, and yet there's still a little bit of a longing. You're longing for connection. You're longing 
for the one that can really meet you and see you or, and you're longing you know, to be seen, to be recognized. So even though some of you may be in relationship, may be in marriages, is there a longing? And, and okay, and then this takes us to the part where we want to change them to make them so they can meet us, okay? But there's still, the point is, there's still a longing. That longing also pulls in other beings that also have the longing and the, you know, the wanting. So there's also something about the wanting. Uh, there's a wanting that on some level that feels like it, no matter what, it can never be fulfilled. Okay? Am I making sense on that? When I talk about there's a wanting? Okay? That deep, deep, deep core wanting is really the desire. What's, let me back up a little bit. Just imagine that in awareness itself, there really is nothing but awareness. In awareness, there's no separation. There's no absence of other. There's no loneliness. There's no thoughts at all. It's just an awareness of all that is. When you separate from that awareness that all, of all that is, you become conscious of your own awareness, looking back at awareness itself. You've now become separate or at least it feels like it, because now you have an awareness that belongs to, or that is actually inside of, a physical form. Okay? So if we take the awareness out of this body, like if we could, if we could just reach right in, take the awareness out, put it out here with all awareness, there would be no more loneliness. There'd be no more feeling of separation. There would be no more longing moment we put awareness into, isolated into this physical body, and this physical body now sees itself as physical body, separate than that physical body, separate from all the different physical bodies. Therefore, I am separate, I am different, I am alone. So that deep, deep wanting is actually comes from your initial separation from the oneness, from the total awareness that is the all that is. Okay? So, in order to clean that up, that really does mean bringing you back into the state of oneness and then bringing you back out into physicality, back into oneness, back into physicality, so you begin to get there really is no difference. So right now, one thing that's kind of cool that you can do is if you realize that, let's just, just, just us right here, just us, okay? We are all the same awareness. We are all the same awareness. The part of you that's aware, that's aware of the body, aware of the sound of my voice, aware of the words, aware of sounds, sights, feelings of the body, that awareness, it's all of us. We are all that awareness. When we start really tuning into that, that feeling of feeling alone, feeling separate, begins to dissipate because you start to live with awareness in the physicality and then you start to see physical energy, physical beings, but you're also becoming aware, ah, it's all the same awareness. There is no separation. When we leave the physical body, the only thing that's leaving is the awareness. But we also attach form to it, so we present it to one another as though we are still the physical form that you knew us as or the last incarnation that we knew ourselves as. What also happens, though, is as we go into the light and become that state of pure awareness, then we begin to, we can take form of any lifetime we've had. When other beings die, they'll see us and we can present with them, oh, ten, ten lifetimes ago, I was your mother. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> okay? Oh, mom! <laughs> My long-lost mother. Okay, so we see that, we experience that, okay? But most what happens is the, the form, the, the body dies, the consciousness leaves, the awareness leaves, but it's still attaching because we still think we're the body. And then it holds that, and then it doesn't, some of those that do, don't go into the light, then they come into other people's bodies, but they're still holding on to all their, you know, all their beliefs, all the pain, suffering, all the things that they've been carrying and holding on to. So, you know, it's like we, we don't let go. We keep the cycle going. We keep the torturing, the suffering. We keep it going. So, 
in, in this, in today, you know, what we want to do is start unraveling and we're going to play with pulling you in and out of, also releasing energies from your body, but let's start playing with coming in and out of awareness into the state of oneness to the best of one's ability to do this and bringing you back into form so that you start to get that feeling of, oh, so no matter whether you're in physical body or you're in the expanded state of awareness, it's still the same. And what that does, it starts to help to, to end that feeling of separation and that feeling like you're all alone. You know, that, that it also helps with the wanting. Okay, because the wanting really want, the, the deepest core thing of wanting is the desire to connect, to be loved. Okay? That is the most prominent core, core issue in your life is the need, the want to be loved. And you'll do anything. Oh, okay, how many people will do anything rather than be themselves? Okay, here's a good one. Here's a good one. Okay, when you first meet someone, and it could be a romantic relationship, I'm just using that as an example, but it could be friends as well. Oh, it's everybody. Okay, friends as well. You're kind of feeling them out. What are their thoughts? What are their beliefs? Do they think like I do? Oh, they don't? Oh, well, let me show up and how I think they want me to be, so then I'll, they'll accept me. So we're, we're always sensing each other, feeling things out, and we'll meet each person differently depending on who they are in order for them to accept and love us. So that's how desperate we are to feel loved. The desperation to be loved. I'll do anything. I'll sell my soul to be loved. Okay? Well, people have done that too. You know, so, or to be, to be seen in a certain way. Anything to make one feel as though you are lovable so that you can feel the love, the adoration, so that you don't feel rejected, okay? So we do all these things to avoid feeling that deep, deep, deep wanting, the deep wanting to be loved, okay? So as we unravel this, as I'm looking, as I'm watching this energy, I'm really seeing a lot of dark energies inside of people. When I say dark, that doesn't mean a negative. All it means is unconscious. There's unconscious energy. But it also means there's a lot of other beings inside the energy field, inside the physical body, that are also in that wanting place, and that contributes to the darkness. Okay, so, I mean, if, you're, if you were full of light, the entities wouldn't be coming in. But because most of humanity, like 99.999% of humanity, is feeling that separation and is still wanting the connection and still has the longing and they're looking for it in food and alcohol and drugs and sex and chocolate and all the addictions that, that are out there and it will never fulfill. I mean, you know, you can, you can eat till you throw up but you're still not going to feel like satiated, okay? You can do all the drugs in the world and it's never enough, so it's an endless cycle. So the way to end the cycle is clear out the stuff and start seeking to connect with your, all that is, your pure awareness, that state of oneness.